Grumpy Frumpy. If people ask me what my favorite dry fly is, it's the Grumpy Frumpy, hands down. And this one is the Green Drake Grumpy Frumpy. Okay, the Grumpy Frumpy is one of my most favoriteest patterns in this whole world. And uh, this hook is actually perfect for this fly. This is the Firehole 618. It's a great hook for uh, foam bugs, a hook that you need to like uh, have a little bit more beef to so that it turns your foam flies over properly. I've got a lot of big fish on this hook. No bend out issues at all. So. I'm going to dress this with chartreuse thread. Choose your favorite color or size of chartreuse, lots of different shades. Um, this one's like a fluorescent yellowish chartreuse. So the tail on the Grumpy Frumpy is just some, some type of yarn, your favorite yarn. I think I'm using a Sparkly Merger yarn, but you can use Antron, Zelon, whatever of those you like. And on a Green Drake, it has a pretty dark tail, at least the ones here in the west, so I'm going to do just straight black. And I'll trim that roughly the length of the body of the fly. For the foam that goes over the top of this fly, I'm just taking a piece of 2 millimeter tying foam. It's cut roughly the width of the hook gap, and I'll start it about right here. Uh, get it tied down really nice, and then I'll stretch it somewhat as I advance my thread back to the tail and then bind down that that foam really well and that will keep the fly from spinning the body on this is just going to be olive super fine dub um, green drakes when they hatch are really bright um, so that's why I went with uh, the chartreuse thread which will make a little accent on this fly as you'll see and then this olive is a little bit brighter than some of the olives out there so that's why I chose it so all I'm going to do is just kind of cover up this foam. You might be able to build up a little bit of a thick body, but you don't necessarily need it to be super thick. Okay, so I've got that completely dubbed. I'll pull my foam over now and just tie that down and trim it off at a little bit of an angle, just like that. So I'll tie that... Uh, that foam in and take my thread all the way to the front of the fly and at this point I'm going to take some EP trigger point I'm using dark done but you can adjust this to whatever color you want uh, Drake actually has more of a grayish wing than a green wing so we'll tie that in and just tie that back to where the foam starts and I'm going to trim it off leaving a little bit of the butt showing right there Alright, so now I'm going to take an olive hue hackle. So the hackle can be like badger dyed olive, it can be grizzly dyed olive, it can be straight olive. Um, and I'm tying, this is maybe, I'm, I have a, t a size 10 in the, in the vise. This might even be a size 12 hackle. But where I have a bunch of bulk built up where I'm tying this hackle in, I can get away with a little bit shorter hackle. So I'll just tie that in. So I've got my hackle tied in and I'm going to just advance my thread to the back of this tie-in point. And on the Renzetti it's got a knob on the far side of the vise uh, or, or on the near side of the vise for me. I'll take my thread and just rest that behind this because what I'm going to do is I'll take my hackle forward and back. So I'll wrap it forward, just leaving a little bit of space between the wraps. Doesn't look very good. And then as I wrap back, I'm just wrapping the hackle back over the top of itself. So you have a really thick, bushy hackle. One more turn. And then I'm going to take my thread and I'll catch that hackle right, right where it last turned. And then I'll just wiggle my thread and wrap it through the rest of that hackle. And it makes a super durable tying point. And then I can just take this excess hackle and just pull it against the hackle I wrapped and it'll break right off. Um, so from here I'll just grab the the wing and the hackle, pull it out of the way, create a little bit of a, a head and then I'll just whip finish it.
Okay, so once that is wrapped, I'll trim off some of these. And I'm just going to trim that wing a little bit longer than the hackle. So this is kind of, it kind of fishes like a, a cripple green drake. Um, we're not done though. This is the most important part of this fly. Um, I'm going to reattach my thread. And I'm going to create a band. And this chartreuse will show through now. Um, you need to make a fairly wide band of thread because if you don't your legs won't sit at a proper angle um, so about like that for the legs on this I'm going to use these uh, what are they called I forget these are like micro legs what are they called grizzly micro legs olive um, I used to make marks on all my uh, on all my grumpy frumpies with the marker but this is a really good option so I'm just gonna take one of those fold it in half I'll tie it right on top with a few loose wraps and then just pull them over and place them on each side of that thread wrap and then cinch it down a time or two now if I take this loop that I created in the front and just kinda of work that back I'll be able to whip finish here and I'm just gonna do like a hand whip finish not a ton of times because I'll glue it as well uh oh I trapped one of my legs guess what it should pop right out yep alright so at the end of the day you're looking like that so you can see nice crisscross legs on that grumpy frumpy um, and I'm gonna trim those legs roughly the length of the hackle. So I'll just stick my scissors on the edge of that hackle and just give them a quick trim so it looks like that when you trim it. And then I've really liked this Trout Hunter water-based head cement. I'm just going to come in here and dab some of that on here, get it between the legs and that will seep in. And then I'm going to hit it up here where my last whip finish was as well. Anyway, there it is, the Grumpy Frumpy Green Drake.